Now we're back, we're live. This is Think Tech Hawaii. It's a Monday at 1 p.m. I'm Jay Fidel, and we have the honor of the returning, the returning sojourner, uh, Martin Despangs, professor of architecture at the US uh, UH School of Architecture. Uh, and he spent uh, the last several months in Germany at his various architecture offices and returned only recently a few days ago and uh, learned the hard way uh, that not all the vaccine cards work to get back to Hawaii. Um, but he's here with us now uh, to tell the story. So welcome to the show, Martin. It's nice to see you and it's nice to see you here. Thanks, Jay, for having me. Although I, we all wish the circumstances would be slightly different, right? This is also sort of my, the second part of my honeymoon with my, with our exotic escapism expert, Suzanne, that we know from human humane architecture. See, she has a degree in tourism and in management in business, right? So here we are uh, in our very flamboyant uh, second half of the honeymoon in the Waikiki Grand, in the Grand Hotel in Waikiki. So anyways, uh, we have prepared some slides, get the first slide up. And no doubt, Jay, this is serious, right? There's no, no making fun of it. Uh, these are things from a couple of days ago that Suzanne pulled up from the beginning of last week. So now we get tragically famous here after having you know, kept it all pretty down. Now we're one of the uh, you know, uh, states here with, uh, with cases rising. I took the picture at the bottom left at the uh, well, the person who brought us food from the ABC store took that picture here, you know, that uh, Queens is filled up, um, uh, you know. Well, it was national news, Martin. This was national news. Yeah. It was on national TV channels uh, yeah, about yeah, the, yeah. the problem in Hawaii. Yeah, exactly. So uh, second slide, please. Uh, not to get this wrong, I'm not an expert in the first skin, you know, skin doctor or any kind of doctor. I'm also not an expert in the second skins, the kind of clothing and textile we wrap around us. But very quickly, you know, this is just to give you a little bit of what we do in Europe. This is what uh, we call a surgical mask, medizinische Gesichtsmaske. Okay, now it's obviously the green screen is protecting it, but it says on the back, the moment we can see it, medical uh, face mask. But then the most preferred is what we call the FFP2 mask. These are these here, FFP2. And these have been figured out by the, the experts, right, over there to be the most efficient and effective. I'm a little sort of, you know, uh, disturbed here when I see well-meant, you know, funny Aloha pattern printed face masks of any kind of fabric that don't seem to comply with what's common sense, not just amongst the experts, right? But the general public who gets themselves informed by the experts, right? Well, the people who wear masks below their nose. Yeah, these, exactly. I see a lot of that. Yeah, so next slide. So as you said, Jay, it's good to be back, but we had a hell good of a time, both professionally in my teaching, while well, everyone was locked down in the past, you know, lots of months, I was able to get out, you know, fully masked and show them stuff around in the world. And that made you and your colleagues uh, award us with a show of the year award. So both in FinTech and, and, and in the UH, we actually thought it was a better fit to be out there and be an ambassador. But it was time to come back. Our provost, you know, called all the troops back so me, a loyal soldier, I, I did that. And then I did with best intent what you have to do before you leave, you inform yourself. So I went to travel.hawaii.gov and tried to use the first two buttons here to uh, upload my COVID vaccine. I have been uh, fully vaccinated in, in Germany where you get to, into details later. And I also had uh, get myself tested just before you know, taking off. I try to upload that both on this website and next slide, this was the response where it says not approved, not trusted testing partner. So Martin then, you know, not wanting to give up as we know him, next slide. I found the next button that shows other documents uploads. That one I uploaded what I had, which we will look at later and next slide. That's what it gave me. Doesn't that look promising, Jay? It's a QR code. 
by Hawaii, right? Martin was ready to travel. There we go. I flew with United Airlines, by the way, which is my trusted airline. Next slide. So let's look at the stuff that Martin had. So this is how this is how this exotic stuff looks from this weird place called Europe. And Eurofins is one of the to the right. I did some research. It's by Eurofins. So this is the most trusted PCR test that you can get over there. And Euro sounds suspicious, but guess what? These guys, there's a website called EurofinsUS.com. So they're known in the US. They even have, you know, uh, uh, certain facilities there. And they're, as it says here, the world leader in testing for life. Five, 55,000 employees, 900 laboratories, 15 countries. Next slide. Something other exotic. This is what you only know as your CDC card or the VAMS card. So this is here, the, the, the European equivalent, the International Certificate of Vaccination by, by the World Health Organization. And us, you know, having been ending up here in the Grand Hotel in Waikiki, having nothing else to do but doing research, we ended up at the US director of the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, and guess what? He had been on leave for that. And he had worked for who? The World Health Organization. So we tried to get to the big guy and said, hey, you work for who issued us this CDC card, Vance. And of course, we couldn't get him you know, on the phone. So next slide. So what's inside this pass? What's so suspicious about it? OK, this is German, but you can figure You know, there is date. And then there is the vaccination, and then there is the uh, signature uh, of uh, the doctor who, who basically gave it to you, right? So, uh, but then there is something suspicious. Comir Nady, what the hell is that? Next slide will tell us. So this is something else that these suspicious Europeans have come up with. It's, uh, as it says, sorry, it's upside down. You can fold that. So it's the EU, European Union, digital COVID vaccination certificate. So when I got the shots in a little town from a countryside doctor, I went to a cafe and next to the cafe was a pharmacy. And I turned to the pharmacist with my yellow CDC Vans pass and says, can you please sign me up for the digital pass? And he said, sure thing. Just sit down the outside, have a coffee and I will serve it to you once I have done it. Calling service, right? And he came out and he gave us the digital pass with a QR code. Uh, next slide. Oh, uh, stay with this one for a little. Down there, it basically says uh, this suspicious Cominardi again. But down there, the second line, it says BioNTech Manufacturing uh, Company. So next slide. You go to Wikipedia, and you find that this stuff here uh, was developed by the German biotechnology company BioNTech. And they collaborated with Pfizer, an American company. At the very bottom right, they lift the secret of this suspicious name because this Cominati is their trade name. And good news, by the way, at the very top, just as of today, the FDA approved the first COVID-19 vaccine. And guess which one that is? That collaborative one of Americans and Germans. I, by the way, hold both citizenships, luckily and kindly. So we collaborated on that, but then my American side seemed to have forgotten about that for <laughs> that moment of trying to let me back in. Uh, next slide. So here comes the hope. The hope is the little people because you know we both know, and you tried to help me, Jay, thanks for that. But all the big guys up there were kind of a little clueless about what to do, but there was this nurse at this institution, which is the University Health Services at my QH Manoa, where you know I try to stay fit and really don't have a personal family doctor, shame on me, they take good care of me. And they basically say, we have a lot of international students who come with the same documentation. So no problem, I transcribe. I know, even though it has a suspicious name, it's basically COVID Pfizer. So they added this to my immunization records, which we see here. Next slide. So I, I cannot not talk about architecture and health, right? So this is from a show that Soto and I did where we were talking about UH and its you know, roots and where it's going. 
And this is the building where this, uh, you know, brave nurse has uh, performed this, right? It's, a, it's an easy breezy early 60s building that's pretty healthy. So no doubt that this nurse, you know, took this sort of brave, healthy move to basically said, oh, I can approve that. I, I know, you know, I'm educated enough. Next slide. So another good, uh, very promising news is uh, this person here from the Department of Health here in Hawaii, in Honolulu, who basically said, you guys, she looked at all the records we have just gone through, and she came to the conclusion, you guys actually have more proof of evidence of vaccination than most people I have seen. And that being from someone working right in the middle of the Department of Health is surely something that I like to you know, show to people whenever I'm going to be questioned about my vaccination status. Next slide. And in which building does she work? In this building that we know from Baratania, right? This is a mid-century building that um, pretty much is, uh, has a breeze soleil, as we like to call it. So it tries to keep people cool inside and their heads cool. And they can maybe then make cool decisions as, you know, against all odds, basically saying, hey, common sense and doing some research, which is not, doesn't take rocket science, you know, can make us figure out that some people who have not been officially re um, accepted and re-welcomed, because by the way, certain countries and cultures, probably rightly so, even the federal government hasn't been welcoming back, right? And that don't, we don't want to get into which they are, but the Schengen area, which Europe and Germany belongs to, is not one of them, right? But these people, some little people, are able to make exceptions to the rule if they look at the situation in a more detailed way. So next slide. Jay, um, we just, by the way, the, this looks familiar to you. You have done a great movie uh, with ThinkTech about the relationship of climate change and COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, we like to pick up on that one because we're sitting here safe, but you know, there was another hurricane supposed to come and hit us this past weekend, right? And there was Henry on the East Coast and still is, right? And luckily, he wasn't that bad as he was predicted. But it's only a question of when the next one is going to come and, and not if, right? So all these things, you know, this sounds like a very personal thing. And, you know, is Martin allowed to sneak back in easily or not? But this has a much bigger picture. And that gets to what's the future for us on our most paradisal islands, right? How do we, how are we gonna be less vulnerable for things like that, for, for hit being by climate change or by COVID and things like that? Only if we can reinvent ourselves. If we not default back to past and outdated practices, but for example, like projects like this here, which you had been doing a show on with George Kaysen that you continue to do great ones about movies, uh, and uh, his team members, which is Primitiva 3, that tries to make a building that makes us independent again, that, you know, we would, we were not depending on, on other people from the somewhere else in the world coming, leaving their money here and then leaving again. And in the meanwhile, depleting our resources, right? Projects like this are aiming for it to make us self-sufficient and self-sustained again. So we wouldn't need anyone anymore, but then we want people like Hawaiians, as to my understanding, have always been welcoming and curious as the Soto and Kali Akina, as one of them confirm us, right? They wanted the best of all worlds on their most remote island, right? So they're inviting that. So we want to go back to that. Obviously not go to the beach and to the, to the, um, to the thatched holly, but uh, here and now in the 21st century, reconnecting to the essence of that way of life and basically coming up with projects. They're not invasive, they're not imported from the Western world, but truly Hawaiian. Next slide. And how that would look like is how we ended up on this picture here where all the invasive hermetic Howard Hughes and Kamehameha school microwaves would be taken over by nature again and become ruins. And instead of them, we have these new creations and creatures called Primitiva. That, that arise. And you know, you're, you're doing something there on the screenshot that we all tell us in our host meetings that we just had one not to do scratching our heads, but this was probably reasonable to do about this point here. So why won't we want to do that? Uh, last slide now, um, because we need to. While having been away and not being able to do our primary honeymoon, 
on our Polynesian, you know, uh, paradise in Hawaii, the substitute was, as this article from Flux magazine calls it, Europe's Hawaii, which is Madeira. And into Madeira, we could just, you know, sneak in with every, all the documentation we've been showing you. Not even that. They just recognized the PCR test by Eurofins, and in we were. And maybe on a, I don't know how much, not much time left, but a little bit, uh, you were mentioning France, uh, Jay, and we were telepathically, uh, Suzanne just found this one here, you know, non-UU visitors to France can get a health pass to enter social venues. That's just us today uh, from the New York Times. We need to get there, right? Because there's, we're, we're endangered, of course, like everyone else uh, in the world by this mean, disease, no doubt on that. But we're more endangered than most people in the world by our isolation. And we should watch out that it's not an isolation on top of being geographically isolated. We watch out that it doesn't become a mindset isolation, right? So we need to reopen, uh, maybe not in a sense going back to past practices and just busy business uncritically. We need to reopen in, in sort of recalibrating our minds towards a new future that's deeply tracing back to the Hawaiian practices, but innovating them. That's my monologue, and please chip in for the last couple of minutes to. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, your, your reference to France, uh, what I saw in um, one of my various uh, newspapers was. Uh, a photograph of um, a French policewoman uh, in a cafe. And then uh, there was a woman in the cafe reading or drinking a glass of wine or both. And the French um, policewoman was challenging her, uh, have, have you been vaccinated? Because there is a vaccination mandate in France. And um, the, the photograph just uh, depicted that um, the, the, the patron of the um, of the, uh, the woman at the table was holding her cell phone up with a, with a QR code. Um, and then the French policewoman was reading the QR code and thus going to a database somewhere um, to see whether uh, the, you know, the customer uh, was in the database. It was, it was really impressive in terms of the technology. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think we have that here, um, but I also don't think it's rocket science, as you said. And I think we could have that here. Um, and of course, the woman, the woman drinking the wine, she wasn't particularly enamored with this process, but she was part of it. She tolerated it. And that's the way it is in France. You know, it's a, it's a democracy and not everybody's going to be happy with it. But uh, enough people are happy with it so that it works. And my question to you is, uh, why don't we do that here? Why don't we do it in Hawaii? Why don't we do it all over the country? It's simple, isn't it? The QR code, it's even fun. Um, and it allows for a centralized database to be created very easily. And then you send out the QR code to everyone who's been vaccinated so they can prove it up in a, in a credible way. Um, yeah. Why can't we do that everywhere? What, would you support that, Martin? Absolutely. And again, bring back, Eric, please, slide 10, because that is that thing that we're lobbying for here, right? That is this uh, European digital COVID vaccination certification that does exactly that job. And again, I, the story I told you that was so, you know, almost too cute to be true that right after having actually uh, my parents uh, got their got their shot, which they got the good American stuff, right? Johnson and Johnson, you know, that one time shot. And so right after they got their shot, we walked over to that small town marketplace, again, pharmacy next to the cafe. And the pharmacist was, we actually went to CVC here, you know, my trusted pharmacy going along with my um, HMSA, who were basically also, you know, trying to, to help wherever they were able to. But you should have seen people staring at me at the pharmacy here as if I would be an alien. And I'm not anymore legally, my status used to be alien, but now I'm <laughs> You're an American I'm, citizen. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm American. So I think, and again, I think my, after all this sort of ordeal and this sort of, you know, crazy voyage of having been on the phone, you know, 24 seven, almost since being stuck in quarantine, my hope is with the little people, just like with the architecture we're proposing, 
This is not for the rich people. They don't need us and we don't need them. The future and also the biggest challenge is with the little people, but there's also where the hope is because again, a nurse from the University of Hawaii Health Services, and by the way, both were ladies, just so, you know, uh, ladies are, you know, known to have more empathy, right? And care more. Uh, us guys have to admit that. And so they were just saying, hey, you know, I, I'm not saying here, I'm playing to the rule. And this is, you know, what I, you know, what I'm supposed to do. And these are the laws. This is what Travel Hawaii keeps telling us. They keep repeating like an answering machine. Oh, you have not been vaccinated in the US. So I'm sending them, you know, both the proof from the UH health services that has transcribed it. So I said, now it is American, right? Because that's a state organization after all, the University of Hawaii and now the Department of Health. Now it's been transcribed. Now it is American. They don't want to believe that. They just have their rules, right? And they want to play to their rules. So what you need is, is brave citizens who are thinking and open to things and are committed to protect us. Yes, first and foremost, and, and can't take any risk. None of us can take any risk. But if it makes sense, then you know, uh, basically prevent the other big risk that we are basically closing ourselves off because Europeans might be fed up with us and saying, yeah, okay, I'm going to the European uh, Hawaii, which is Madeira, because that's easy. And going to Hawaii, no, that, I end up in quarantine for 10 days, I don't want that. And until we have what we're lobbying for, invented another economy, uh, you know, including the architecture we're proposing. And that's going to take a while, right? And until then, we got to watch out that we don't get back to, into a lockdown and, and lose our main revenue, which again, would basically, you know, that's, that's my paycheck, right? It comes from tourist dollars uh, indirectly, right? And so- oh, you're, um, out of the, you're out of the woods now, but you, you had to spend 10 days in quarantine. You, the state of Hawaii never actually accepted your quarantine proof. No, no, no. I mean, I should say the parts of, uh, of the state of Hawaii that matter to me, which is the Department of Health, can't be any higher institution. And an epidemiologist, you know, who has asked her colleagues, as you can read on that, on, on that slide there, uh, she has. And that's what, what matters the most to me, that slide 14, Eric, bring that back one more time. But the ones who put me in a quarantine, you know, travel Hawaii, they have not, you know. And, that's, and that's, that's really regrettable. <clears throat> it's regrettable on, on the individual level that people didn't have enough uh, trust in you even after you, you know, were able to demonstrate you'd been yeah. vaccinated and you were a legitimate applicant. Uh, know, that's trouble. But the other, yeah. the other part of it is, and, and you touched on this, is that it, it affects our reputation. Um, it affects our ability to retain the reputation as a, um, a tourist destination, which is sensitive and smart, sort of like Singapore, you know, uh, yeah. you, you know, use your head, have common sense. So my question to you is this, you know, you've been through, you've been through, uh, you know, the, the gauntlet here, and you've touched on a number of agencies, you talk to a lot of people, you spend 24 by seven on the phone, trying to connect. Um, and, and clearly it didn't work. Clearly the state did not service you. And yeah. to use the word of the pharmacist that in the small town, the state did not service you. Yeah, it yeah, it yeah. Uh, pushed you away. But <clears throat> all of that, 10 days of trying, uh, what is your recommendation specifically on how we need to reform this system? What do we, aside from being smarter and, and um, you know, more, more tolerant and more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? more tolerant of, of, of travelers. Um, what do we change mechanically, um, administratively, bureaucratically uh, to make this work better? Yeah, before I answer that one more dimension, Jay, although, you know, out of quarantine now, but since, you know, I also serve you and us on Think Tech Hawaii as a citizen, citizen journalist, right? I need to go out and about, you want me to do that. You know, Wednesday at 10 a.m. is is human human architecture every week. There's a new high rise, uh, residential high rise in Waikiki. Um, uh, Brooksfield is the developer. I need to go out and find these people, knock on their doors, right? So if I knock on their door, what do they want to see? Probably a CDC pass. 
I still can't present this to them because I don't have it. And I was told very high up, as you know, well, why don't you get a booster shot? Because then we have record of vaccination from here where we performed it. Well, wait a minute, you know, there has to be a certain period of time between your second vaccination of Pfizer at least and your booster shot, which is I'm not mistaken, seven to eight months. It's not been that long. And then there is an ethical question, right? There's many people in the world who don't even have their first shot, right? So shouldn't they go first? Uh, this is no, an ethical and question, and there's right? also a medical question, Martin. You have to be immune, immune compromised right now to get a booster shot. Exactly. exactly. So you, you'd have to tell them a long story, uh, exactly. a song and dance type of story to get that yeah, yeah. shot. Yeah, yeah, and this yeah. is the Department of Health that told you this? Well, even higher up, right? We've both seen the email and we had, you know, conversations mm. with- That's really too bad. That. It, it yeah. is sort of, it is. So my, my question, my answer to your question, um, again, I'm not a politician. I'm not a medical person. I'm just a simple guy, a citizen, a critical citizen. And uh, I would just say, after this experience, I can only say let the little people take charge. And, you know, if this woman here who was, know, writing that and the nurse at the university health centers, let these people be department heads. I'm sorry. That's the only thing I can tell you because these people just show they're worth their money and they're able to look above and beyond, you know, the regulations that they have put in place and look at every, you know, case individually and then make a, make a responsible decision. And I, you know, it, it all comes down to, to, as you called it, common sense, and people who have the guts and the balls and just the, the backbone to, uh, to, to do that. That's what we need. we need. We need critical, constructively critical citizens here. And that's- Well, Marco, we I mean, uh, uh, rather Martin, I, I just, um, I wanna add one more point is that this reveals not only problems in the agencies that you dealt with, uh, I guess the Department of Health mostly, um, but, it, but it also reveals that Hawaii has more than its fair share of, um, of bureaucracy, of hard bureaucracy. And we really have to get over that. It's, a, it's an us and them. This has been revealed in other government functions here over the time of COVID, not just you know, this uh, immigration function. And um, I'm, I'm troubled by what happened to you, but I, I also see it as part of a larger problem. Uh, and if we wanna find lessons here, uh, we should visit those lessons on all agencies, which include um, frontline bureaucrats that just say no. Um, and it, 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 it needs reform, in my opinion. Absolutely. And so what would, you, uh, what would you leave with um, you know, our viewing audience? What would you, what would you leave with um, people in some of the circumstance coming from Germany or else, uh, elsewhere in Europe? Uh, on what Hawaii means these days in terms of a tourist destination to someone who, is, who has had the vaccine. Yeah, well, I would say again, hopefully, you know, the Biden administration, and that depends on how we deal with it in Germany with, you know, all the precautions and the, the right mask we're using. Hopefully cases will be going down. And so hopefully then, first of all, all these people from the world can visit us again. I mean, that's that needs to happen first, right? Because I'm I'm sort of the crash test dummy, right? And it got crushed, right? <laughs> because um, you know, none other European dummies are supposed to get in. So when that happens, at that point, we need to have all made our homework. And obviously, you know, it always takes two. And and I should have I blame myself and have to apologize to my bride that I haven't done more more research. Because there was, after all, a, a startup, I guess, I guess I have to say, who found uh, sort of testing centers in my, in my, in my hometown, uh, in my second adopted hometown of Munich in Germany, that performed PCR tests that obeyed to the ones that the US requires. But that is after the fact I found this out, which obviously you know, made us even more frustrated because we should have found out to begin with. So to us Europeans, I say, do more and more homework. And on our side here, you know, let's look at, as you said, what, how the French do it, right? If the French can do it, you know, we can do it here. So um, 
really yeah, all that really... leads martin all that leads to the notion that we have not just a pandemic we have an endemic yeah and that this is going to be with us for years to come and it's going to be a global issue yeah my own view and there are a lot of people who agree with me i don't know if you do but i think we're going to have a national passport this yeah. should be um uniform state to state all around the country there should be one database um, there should be one QR code or other way to connect with that database. And furthermore, Martin, here's the point. Um, this is a global problem. It's going to be increasingly a global problem. Why can't we have this on a global basis? Why can't the United Nations establish uh, a series of passports or, or one global passport in order to prove up? It's not that hard. It's not rocket science. How do you no. feel about that possibility? Absolutely. And again, I think that the kind of the voyage we went through and all the research should have, you know, proven uh, we're almost there, right? I mean, we're technically, if the director of the US CDC has worked for the organization that issues all the Europeans the vaccination passport, and he's back to work for his native US, right? Come on, we're there. We just have to ratify it. We just have to get it done. But obviously, we have to get it done fast, right? Because again, I mean, Jay, look outside. I mean, it's it's to me like if you go back to the first slide, one more second, and and the cases and the charts, right? We're way higher with a curve than we were when we shut down everything here, right? And we had no tourism anymore. And on top of, and and there all the crises, as, as you perfectly point out in the movies and elsewhere, are intertwined and interconnected, right? Because you know, we heard with shutting tourism down, who do we hurt the most, right? At the lowest in the chain, right? The little people, there we go again. And, you know, Hawaiian population make like 4%, right? But what is their, their affected, uh, you know, percentage is 24%, right? So, so there's a relationship with that one. We need to, we need to, we need to get back. And so we need to do this fast because I think probably the next shutdown is, 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 is right around the corner. And, and at that point, you know, we need to get back to reopening again faster than last time and, and use all the time, you know, learning from these brave nurses here and say, you know, how, you know, do trainings. How did you come to the awareness of checking these documents from people from elsewhere in the world? We mm. said it now the third time, no rocket science, mm. just, mm. just use common sense and, and build it up from, from bottom up almost and then top down. You know, let the let the people be in charge, and you know, yeah. Anyway, I hope I hope everybody's listening, Martin. Uh, and uh, a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, welcome back. It's nice to see your smiling face here in the islands, Bill Cummin, so to speak. Uh, and the other is congratulations on your wedding and your marriage. Uh, however, however problematic it might have been to come back to Hawaii, still congratulations. Uh, Martin call Despang. A, call it a good test, Jay. <laughs> a test, right. A, 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 proof of, a, a proof of marriage. Well put, well put. <laughs> and and, and we, will, we will revisit these themes, obviously, in the realm of the built environment and human architecture. Tune in for that every Wednesday, 10 a.m., guys and girls. Martin Despang, my hero, Professor Martin Despang. Look for him uh, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is it tomorrow or Wednesday? No, Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday on Humane Architecture. Thank, Thank you so much, Martin. Thank Aloha. you, Jay. Bye bye.